the big difference when he grows up, in fact, if we wanted to wait for the year 2001, is that he will have in his own house, not a computer as big as this, but at least a console to which he can talk to his friendly local computer and get all the information he needs for his everyday life, like his bank statements, his theater reservations, all the information you need in the course of living in a complex modern society. This will be in a compact form in his own house. He'll have a television screen like these here and a keyboard and he'll talk to the computer, get information from it, and he'll take it as much for granted as we take the telephone. The personal computer revolution has come in phases. First, in the late 70s and early 80s, Apple and IBM created the first microcomputers that were both compact and affordable, and that was the birth of the home computer market. Small personal computers selling from $500 to $5,000 are fast becoming a multi-billion dollar business. Visionaries talk about personal computers the size of a book on the market by the end of the decade. Second, near the turn of the millennium, handheld PDA devices like the Palm Pilot and Apple Newton were well on their way to becoming the pocket computers of today that are not only powerful but small enough to hold in your hand. This is simply like sitting at, a, at an internet terminal, being at my PC, right? I mean, I can almost do anything here because I am wirelessly interconnected to the web, to the net, to everything I want. That's right, everything you need. You carry your network around with you right here. So where are we headed? Well, just as we can look back at the early iterations of these past two phases in contempt, we can also look at the early versions of the third phase to come. In the next five to 10 years, bulky products like the Oculus Rift and Microsoft HoloLens will give way to much smaller, more elegant, smart glasses, and eventually probably smart contact lenses, which is why I'm tentatively calling this phase eye computers. You may be thinking we already have smart glasses, such as Google Glass, but no products on the market right now quite check all the boxes that are needed for what I'm talking about. I'm talking about full augmented reality smart glasses with spatial tracking hardware and cameras built into them. But what is augmented reality exactly? Well, the best example I would say right now is Pokemon Go. When you go to catch a Pokemon in Pokemon Go, it's rendering the virtual Pokemon on top of the footage coming from your phone's camera. And so the virtual object and real world objects inhabit what's called a mixed space. And this gives the illusion that that virtual Pokemon is actually sitting in the real world. This is the idea of augmented reality. If you have an iPhone, you have an app called Measure pre-installed. What Measure does is uses augmented reality to, with decent accuracy, measure the distances from point A to point B and can actually do it in all three dimensions. And Google just updated Google Maps to have augmented reality walking directions. So here's how it could look like in Google Maps. Let's take a look. You open the camera. You... Obviously, this isn't too useful right now. It's not very practical to hold your phone at arm's length and look at the tiny screen to see which way you need to walk. The reason Apple and Google are investing so much into augmented reality on their mobile platforms is because they know in the near future they'll be able to port this software to smart glasses hardware. Let's look back at my three phases here. I'm not actually categorizing these by the hardware. What I'm doing is categorizing these based on the implementation of general purpose operating systems. Home computers were streamlined predominantly by Windows. If you look at a home computer today and compare it to one from 40 years ago, the thing they share is that they're still operated by a mouse and keyboard. Eventually though, computers got small enough that a mouse and keyboard was no longer going to cut it and we needed to find a new way to interact with these machines. We saw buttons, we saw styluses. Today, of course, we're all fluent in multi-touch. Well, how do I scroll through my list of artists? How do I do this? I just take my finger and I scroll. That's it. Today, most smartphones are either running some variant of iOS or Android, which are operated by multi-touch. Inevitably, Smart glasses will see the implementation of two or three AROSs. And when you have a standardized basic that runs on most hardware, you get to where the real innovation happens, the third party software. And this has been the case from the beginning. VisiCalc, for example, was the first ever spreadsheet program 
for the Apple II, and that program single-handedly legitimized computers as an effective tool in the workforce. And what would the legacy of the iPhone be without the App Store? Entire industries have been brought up from mobile applications. And that was the case with home computers too. These phases also correlate with explosions of business opportunity. There was the dot-com explosion. There was the mobile app explosion. If you're a young entrepreneur looking to the future, trying to see where that next PC gold rush is going to be, I'm here to tell you that it's in that of augmented reality applications. I can't think of any field that will not be in some way affected by augmented reality smart glasses. The possibilities are endless. Let's start with retail. You'll never shop for things the same. You'll be able to browse through Amazon in some sort of AR web browser, and you'll be able to click and load a virtual version of whatever object you're looking to buy and see exactly how big it is in your hand, see if it'll fit where you want on your nightstand. Who's gonna drive to Ikea when you can load a virtual version of every couch that they offer and see exactly how it looks in your own living room without ever having to leave the house? And who's gonna drive to a clothing store to try on a dozen outfits when you can do it at a full body mirror in your own bathroom? You can already use AR to preview different hair colors and makeup styles. It's only a matter of time before we're talking about full outfits. When we do need to go to the store though, that augmented reality walking direction stuff from earlier will be quite useful. You'll be able to walk into a supermarket and ask for directions to the peanut butter. And it'll draw a little line on the ground like a video game taking you straight there. And think about that measure app from earlier, that'll be on smart glasses. You'll be able to measure distances without any physical tools at a level of accuracy that is kind of dumbfounding when we think about it right now. And along those lines, the way we consume information about the world is gonna become so much richer. See, home computers brought the internet into our homes. It gave us a window to the gathered knowledge of the human species, and smartphones have put that window in our pockets. Smart glasses are going to put the internet on our faces. And who are the first people that are gonna to wanna to buy the internet for your face? College students taking final exams. Imagine a chemistry major literally blinking and seeing the periodic table displayed in front of them. Or a botanist that can look at any plant and see a little label floating over it saying exactly what that plant is. Or an astronomer who can look at the sky in broad daylight and see the star map transposed over it. In the future, you'll be able to walk into a bar where you know nobody. And as soon as the cameras on your glasses see their faces, it will display what their name is right next to them, possibly even their occupation and a bio. It'll get the information from Facebook or Twitter or something. The days of asking for someone's name may be coming to a close. And who's gonna learn a new language when you can just get subtitles displayed underneath people speaking? This would also be useful for people that are hard of hearing. Now, do you remember the scene in Star Wars where R2-D2 and Chewbacca are playing sort of a holographic chess game. Well, with augmented reality and mixed spaces specifically, we have essentially achieved holograms. You don't get to the real sci-fi shit until we start talking about shared mixed spaces. It's one thing for me to connect to a mixed space and see the virtual objects transposed on top of real objects. It's another thing entirely for multiple users to connect to the same mixed space and see those same virtual objects no matter where they are in the room. iOS 12 brought shared experiences to ARKit and there are already some apps on the App Store like this game from Lego that is designed to have multiple people connected to that same mixed space playing. And with products like the Microsoft HoloLens which are using augmented reality in work environments, shared mixed spaces are extremely useful for collaborating on projects. But these are all relatively small mixed spaces. It gets interesting once you start to think about very large mixed spaces. Let's go back to Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go may have started as a mobile app, but you bet the future of this is in that of a full augmented reality experience. The size of the game world in Pokemon Go is identical to the size of the real world. Pokemon Go is really just this kind of quiet digital reality that rests on top of objective reality. In time, you'll wear AR glasses and not only will you see Pokemon at your feet, you'll be able to look across town and see Pokestops and gyms. So Pokemon Go will have a mixed space 
that is the size of the whole world. Anybody and everybody playing Pokemon Go connected to that same mixed space will be able to see the same virtual objects in the same places. What if a city like Chicago or Seattle adopts a public mixed space to put uh, public safety notifications? It's a hell of a lot cheaper to do that than it is to keep manufacturing physical signs. And billboards are going to be a thing of the past once advertiser companies realize that there is this unlimited advertising space just waiting to be used. It's really unclear how this will work. Will they be in like channels? Will you connect to like the, the city channel and then switch over to the Pokemon channel and then switch over to the Facebook channel, stuff like that? Or will they all be shared into one big mess? And it's unclear what these will even be called. I've been calling them mixed spaces. A better name would probably be mixed realities. Some companies are calling these verses. Some companies are calling these metas. It's analogous to the early 90s when people would refer to what eventually became the internet as the information superhighway. If you ain't on the information superhighway, baby, then where is it? In fact, the internet as we know it may end up becoming the greater layers of reality that are transposed by personal computing devices. Now you may hear that and think this is way farther off than I'm giving it credit for, so I'll close this video by talking about augmented reality hardware that exists right now. Starting, of course, with the Microsoft HoloLens 2 that was demoed a couple weeks ago. Now HoloLens 2 has the expected upgrades. It has eye tracking, it has hand tracking. But what I found most impressive from their demo is actually how they're approaching uh, hollow presence. You may have seen this demonstration from the HoloLens 1 a few years back that showed what is essentially a holographic Skype call between this guy and his daughter several hundreds of miles away. But this demo would have been absurdly expensive to create. Essentially what's happening is you have sensors in the corners of the respective rooms that are tracking the person and generating animation data based on the movement that that person is exhibiting. And then it's reanimating a virtual model of that person for the other user. So some Microsoft employees would have had to meticulously create the 3D model of this guy's daughter and then have her wear the correct outfit at the time of the demonstration. This whole process is gonna to need to be significantly streamlined if it's ever going to enter the mainstream. And it actually looks like the HoloLens 2 is doing that. Now supposedly, the HoloLens 2 has software that can generate a 3D model of you based on a single photograph. I have no idea how that's even possible, but if that's actually true, then that's game changing. The Magic Leap 1 is an AR headset in early development phases. What's interesting about the Magic Leap 1 though is that it actually does have an AR OS called Luminos, as well as an AR web browser called Helix. Now because developers are starting to get their hands on this, we actually are seeing some third-party software applications, like this one, which lets you watch NBA games in augmented reality. I've thought about this quite a bit. In the future, you won't watch sports on the TV. Well, you could, but you'll probably be able to load a virtual version of the court or the field and watch holographic versions of the sports players playing their game. And finally, there's the Meta 2 which is a tethered headset, which means it actually needs to be connected to a PC, which is whatever. Meta 2 is the most promising of all of these by far. The biggest issue with augmented reality, and what will probably be the most difficult one to overcome, is that when it's rendering a virtual object over the real world, it's always putting that virtual object in the foreground. So if your dog walks in between the object and you, it still renders that object on top of your dog which is extremely jarring. And that's something that will need to be fixed before augmented reality ever becomes mainstream. And the Meta 2 is actually trying to work on this. When you're raising your hand and having to interact with virtual objects, it is actually trying to stop rendering things when your hand is in front of it. It looks like shit, obviously, but the fact that it's even doing this is insane. Finally, of course, no one is going to wear this in public. Someday smart glasses are going to be as common as smartphones are right now, but that will never be the case until they are more or less indistinguishable from regular glasses. The real trick with that though is that the computer industry and the fashion industry aren't exactly two inclusive industries with each other. 
That is, with one major exception. Apple entered the fashion industry with the Apple Watch. And they may be the only company that recognizes the importance of the design of AR smart glasses. Now the way Apple makes products is not to be the first, but the best. And whether you agree with whether or not they have achieved that, you can't deny that that is how they design things. They wait and see what other companies and what other manufacturers make. They analyze those products, see what their strengths are, see what their weaknesses are, and try to make the best version. And since there are AR smart glasses on the market, it won't be long before Apple introduces their iteration. And as we all know, once Apple does something, the rest of the computer industry follows. And once that happens, which I predict will be in the next five years or so, no field or industry is going to be the same. Augmented reality will affect you at some point in the near future. So to borrow one of Steve Jobs' favorite quotes from Walter Gretzky, don't skate to where the puck is, skate to where it is going to be.